all right guys welcome back to another raid shadow legends video the zali plays uh so we got some pretty big information regarding the new doom tower rotation as well as uh six new champions so we got three new epics three new uh legendaries that you can get from doom tower hard and yeah one of the champions is uh dark kale so that is very interesting we were all wondering when are we gonna get dark kale since we got since we got dark Aethel, we got elaine the undead elaine and we also got uh, Ultimate Gallic. So here he is, Dark Kale. All right, so first thing we're going to do, we're actually going to watch the video, uh, the What's Next video for Raid. And then I also have the kit of the other champion, of the champions of Dark Kale and so forth. Um, I do have their skills, and then we're going to go over that. And hopefully we'll see some bosses in this video. Hey I don't everyone, know if you guys already welcome seen the to the new not. episode of What's Next in Raid. We promise to deliver these videos more frequently, so here we are with a short set of awesome features and updates you can look forward to in the near future. Let's dive in and see what we've got. First on the menu is a huge new update for the Doom Tower, the third rotation. As we've mentioned in one of our previous videos, the there are three main rotations that we had planned for the Doom Tower. Two of them are in the game already, and here's the third. So what does a new rotation mean? More types of secret rooms? mixed up encounters for regular floors, and most importantly, two deadly new bosses. We'll be sure to cover them in a dedicated video closer to release, but we do have some cool details to share right now. The first boss is Bommel the Dreadhorn, a massive lava beast. If he doesn't look scary enough on his own, take a look at that nasty oh, dread bombs like he, he bombs spawns. Him. You can't kill them, you can't stop them, and they deal some serious damage when they go off. The only thing you do is freeze them to help cool off the burn a bit. He'll also have some tricks up his sleeve that affect the buffs and debuffs you use in battle. Let's just say you're going to want a team composition with good timing and a few explosives of your own if you don't want to end up getting blown to pieces. And while most of our Doom Tower bosses are monsters of varying levels of horrifying... Dude, that means... Does that mean we have to use bombs and poisons? That'd be pretty cool, man. We finally have a use for that, but... Uh, uh, unfortunately, people are going to have to build, <laughs> build their bomb teams. But I see unkillable is actually very important for this boss fight. I don't know if I don't know if block debuffs um, actually stops the bombs. Maybe it's unresistible because it looks like they're using unkillable instead. Man eater, man. The next challenger is something else entirely. Don't let that charming smile fool you, though. She's just as vicious and dangerous as the rest of them. Introducing Astranix the Dark Fae. She has the unique ability to banish your champions, taking them out of the battle entirely. They won't take damage, but they won't be able to take turns either. At the same time, she'll create a mirror copy of your banished champion, and you can't get them back until you slay their double. If you're not careful, your strengths will become her strengths. If that wasn't bad enough, some of this Fairy Queen's skills will gain additional advantages depending on the affinity setup of your champions. You'll have to keep that in mind when building your team. No matter how you approach it, it'll be a tough fight, so don't miss a more detailed boss breakdown video coming soon. Okay, so that's what you're up against, but they've got some awesome stuff for you if you win. Both these bosses will drop new materials to craft two new artifacts at the forge. Defeating the Dreadhorn will get you Dreadhorn Plates, oh, which you can use to forge Fortitude Artifacts. A two-piece Fortitude set offers a big boost to your defensive champions, 10% extra defense, and plus 40 to resistance. Meanwhile, the Dark Fae will get you Fae... Yo, that, that's actually nice. ...a Spheres. You can use these to forge lethal artifacts, a four-piece set that ignores 25% of the enemy's defense and grants a nice plus 10% boost to crit rate on top. But that's Good not piece. all the new rewards we've got. There are some creep, new huh? champions you can summon with fragments from secret rooms in the Doom Tower, and they are freaking sweet. First off, everyone's favorite snarky elf gained another level in badass. If you're like the original Kyle, you'll love the buffed-up, poison-loving, epic man? version. The clan boss is going to be quaking in its mighty little boots. Kael won't be arriving alone. Right beside him is a powerful warrior clad in dragon scale armor. She'll hit hard and hit fast, so fast that her enemies will have a tough time hitting back. Finally, we've decided the bad guys deserve some love and settled on a new legendary for the demon spawn faction. This burning prince is all about fear and flames with a healthy dose of helping out his fellow demon spawn. So, that's the third rotation of the Doom Tower for you, but that's not all that's getting updated. We've said that expanding clan-related features is going to be one of our primary objectives in 2021, and we intend to keep that promise. Introducing Clan Improvements, Volume 1. 
First of all, all clans will have a clan level now, which you can increase by completing different activities. Good. Your clan's level will give you a bunch of different benefits, like increasing the silver you win from campaign stages and giving you a few extra multi-battle attempts nice. every day. It'll also influence another huge part of clans, Clan the clan shop. shop. The clan shop oh, will be brimming finally. with awesome stuff you Yo, can Yonaka? get using clan gold. Clan gold will be earned from clan quests. Yonaka is going to be free for everyone, basically. You need 100 gold for one fragment, so that's going to be another 100 days uh, to get a legendary. But that's good. Yonaka is actually amazing. I actually have a video on her if you guys want to check that out. Where she does nukes. Uh, she's very good. So I'm glad I've given her away for free. But that's just the start. In the future, we plan on having more ways to earn clan gold, clan XP, and all kinds of other cool clan stuff. But wait, I hear the attentive among you asking, what the heck are clan quests? Good catch. Clan quests are special missions you get every week. Nice. Offering clan gold and clan XP as rewards. However, they're going to take some teamwork and coordination to complete because only one clan member will be able to take on a given quest. You're going to have to coordinate with your fellow clan members to work out who should take which quest take and quotes. figure out the best strategy <laughs> to complete them all. Like with the Doom Tower bosses, we'll three. publish a dedicated video breaking down the new clan features closer to release. Of course, we're not forgetting about quality of life improvements either. Many of you guys follow the gotta catch them all strategy when it comes to champions, and who can blame you? They look great in the collection for starters, and you never know when you'll need a specific skill set. But that does mean space in the champion collection and vault runs out faster than you can say summon rush. But don't worry, we're planning to add another 100 slots to the champion collection so you can get some more room to breathe. While we're at it, we'll also increase inbox space by 100 slots to make sure you don't miss out on anything you've earned. Still, don't let it overfill. And speaking of catching them all, it's a long journey, and we know it means you're likely to hit a duplicate champion or two oh, along yeah. the way. But don't worry, we'll also be releasing a solution for that too. We're still hammering out the final details before we're ready to unveil everything. But what we can say right now is that it's not going to be a one-stop solution. We're going to provide multiple short-term and long-term uses for your duplicate champs. We'll give you the full lowdown very soon, but we just wanted to say the feedback you guys provided has been essential in shaping our approach here, and we think you're really going to like it. Okay, one last thing to wrap this up, a balance change. We've looked at the decreased critical damage to buff and decided it wasn't performing as well as we had hoped. So there's a change incoming. Rather than provide a flat decrease, it will lower the target's critical damage by 25% of the stat. That means a champion with 200% crit damage will go down to 150% instead of 175%. We hope that will make the debuff more useful both in PvE and PvP battles. And that's it for today, folks. Don't forget to press thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. All right, so basically they gave Whirl and Frost King a buff indirectly. <laughs> All right, so that's pretty cool. We got a lot of new information. As you guys saw, we got the new clan activities, improvements, levels, uh, quests, shop, uh, the new champions. So the new champions to me are the most interesting. Uh, we have Dark Kyle. Apparently his name is Kyle or something over here. All right, so I do have his skills over here. Uh, his A1 ability attacks one enemy three times. Each hit has a 25% chance uh, to instantly activate two poison debuffs or one poison debuff and one HP burn debuff. Does that actually make him better in clan battles or does that make him worse? Isn't that basically... Uh, no, no. Is that basically combust or no? No, I think that's different than combust. Yeah, I think that makes him better. Uh, A2, binding darkness. AoE has a 75% chance of placing decreased attack. We got a Kale. I'm still going to call him Kale. I don't care. You got a Kale with decreased attack. AoE decreased attack. Each critical hit also has a 75% chance of an increase in duration of all the debuffs on the target by one turn. Uh, we got debuff extending right here. So this guy is actually going to be amazing in Clan Boss. Uh, and other areas of the game as well. Reality Acid. He has a 75% chance of placing three 5% poison debuffs. And a 25% poison sensitivity debuff for two turns. We finally got uh, poison sensitivity. He has a passive ability. Decreases the crit rate of enemies under two or more poison debuffs by 15%. That is actually very strong. If there are multiple champions on the team with the skill, only one will activate. So yeah, there's the Dark Kale. I think he is amazing. Um, I think he's up there with uh, Dark Elaine. And um, him and Dark Elaine are going to be the best ones. Dark Aethel, I think, needs a rework. Um, and Ultimate Gallic, I think he is good for his uh, niche use. All right, so Gwyneth is actually going to be the third champion you get from the Doom Tower. So you still, uh, you got to get Taya first, and then Dark Kale, and then uh, Gwyneth. So let's, let's go over Taya first then. So this is Taya, uh, kind of weird 
uh, looking champion. All right, so Taya's skills attacks on enemy has a 50% chance of placing decreased accuracy uh, for two turns. And then Venom Kunai attacks on enemy three times. Each hit has a 75% chance of placing a 5% poison evil for two turns. Um, Blood Boil attacks on enemy has a 75% chance of instantly activating any poison debuffs and HP burn debuffs on the target. Also has a 75% chance of placing heal reduction debuff for two turns. Doesn't that kind of ruin Ninja's kit? Because she is part of the Shadow Kin faction. Uh, to me, I don't think that... I think she might be above average. But we got a free Shadow Kin, so that's good. Alright, so Gwyneth skills. AoE attack that will not trigger counterattacks. That is amazing. Attacks one enemy before attacking, and she has an 80% chance of placing weakened on the target for two turns. And then she heals by 30% of the damage inflicted. And heals all allies with any surplus heal, so if she has full health... Uh, she's basically going to heal all your allies. Flow of Malaise. Transfer all debuffs from this champion to one target enemy and then attacks the enemy. Ignores 10% of the dark's defense for each debuff they under. Gwyneth is amazing. That's probably why she's the third champion that you will acquire. All right, so Varl the Destroyer is going to be the first champion you get from the Doom Tower Hard. So here's his abilities. A1 attacks when enemy heals himself by 30% of the damage inflicted. That's a pretty big heal. Uh, AoE attack has a 75% chance of placing weakened for two turns. Also places decreased attack for two turns on those enemies who receive a weakened debuff. Uh, that's, that's actually very good. Calamity Torrent. Attacks when enemy will ignore 30% of the target's defense. Decrease the target's max HP by 50% of the damage inflicted. Uh, that is going to be very powerful. Especially if you guys need a champion for Scarab King. Uh, places block damage buff on the champion for one turn if the attack kills an enemy. Very good. Mass Murders is passive. It increases attack by 10% each time they use an active skill. Attacks go up to 100% and resets each round. Yeah, this guy is going to ramp up. I think this guy is going to be very good. All right, next champion is Basatha. Kind of a weird name. All right, so he's A1 attack. He attacks when enemy has a 40% chance of placing 50% uh, decrease attack for two turns. So he has a decrease attack on his A1. A2 places strengthen buff and a continuous heal buff on all allies for two turns. Also places a shield buff for two turns equal 25% of this cha of this champion's HP on allies under fear, true fear, freeze, provoke, sleep, or stun. Uh, staggering hept, AoE attack that has a 75% chance of placing stun. And decreasing each enemy's turn meter by 30%. This is a huge ability here. So we have an AoE stun with turn meter manipulation. Soul Keeper is passive. Whenever an enemy is revived, he has a 75% chance of placing a stun debuff on them for one turn. This effect cannot be resisted or blocked. Nice. So Vasatha is actually actually looks amazing. Alright, and the last champion is Vassal or Vassal of the Seals. A1 attack. He attacks one enemy, places HP burn on the target for two turns if they are under a true fear debuff or a decreased attack debuff. Also place a shield buff on the champion for two turns equal to 10% of the max HP. So the good news is he actually has true fear in his kit. And does he have decreased attack? Yes, he does. That's good. Yeah, so Infernal Darkness, he actually has an AoE that places true fear and decreased attack. That's actually very powerful as well. Uh, Damon possession balance of the hp of all, of all allies so that's kind of like a, an equalizer with this ability and i don't think heal reduction can even alter this ability just like with um uh, just like with sinesha so right here equalize the hp of all allies um this ability when i actually used it heal reduction does not even affect it and i've seen it in arena as well so that is going to be a pretty uh powerful heal i guess well he also gets an extra turn after that the Legion of Doom, he receives 20% less damage from champions from Bannerlord, High Elf, and Sacred Order factions. There are two or more Demon Spawn champions on the team alongside this champion. He increased the crit damage of all Demon Spawn champions on the team by 20%. That's actually good, man. I like that. Yeah, so Vassal of the Seal actually looks very good. Yeah, overall, I think this is a good update. Let me know down in the comment section what do you guys think. Uh, if you guys are new to the channel, consider subscribing. Uh, if you like the video, make sure you guys drop a like. And as always, I want to thank you guys for watching. And I'll see you guys in the next video. I'm Tyrone. I need everybody to subscribe to the homie Ali Al Plays. And that's non-negotiable.